Sports Talk Chicago. Here with John Zaglou back at it. Last segment of today's program. John Zaglou here hosting. John Meadows directing and producing. We are live all over the place on all of our great TV and radio affiliates. WKAN 105.5 The Ticket, ACTV, Jan TV, WJOB, Cities 92.9 Talk FM, and our new affiliate, 98.3 The Life, up in Round Lake Beach, Illinois. Hit up all of our great affiliates. Help them, support them, follow them on social media, and listen to our show on them throughout the week and weekend. You can follow us all over at Sports Talk Chicago, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the like button on our videos, and subscribe. We are uh, gaining subscribers quickly, which is awesome. We have a goal of 20,000. We're about 1,300 away, so every single subscription helps as we are on the road to greatness here on STC. We appreciate all of your help. We appreciate all of you guys for hanging out with us and tuning in. We had a heavy Bears discussion in segments one and two. The Bears obviously hired a new offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, and Matt Eberflus took it upon himself to defend Justin Fields during the OC interviews. You can listen to those two segments on the podcast. Go to sportstalkchicago.com or find us on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. You can listen to the show by segment or listen to the full show in one swoop. Either way, your needs are going to be met on all of those great platforms. We're going to end with baseball. Yes, baseball. And get this. Three players made it to the Baseball Hall of Fame this year. But one, a friend of this program, I'm going to admit my bias now, did not make it, and he missed by three votes. The BBWAA and the Baseball Writers Association of America, they announced who made the Hall of Fame this year in baseball. The following made it in. Adrian Beltre, Todd Helton, snooze, and Joe Bauer made it in. Our friend Billy Wagner came literally three votes short, and he has one year left to get in. I think next year will be his year. If not, that'd be an unbelievable travesty. Nevertheless, it is unfortunate to see him fall just a bit short here in 2024. Now, the three who got in, each of them has a case for and against, except for Adrian Beltre. Beltre was a hands-down Hall of Famer, 3,000-plus hits, 470-plus home runs, one of the greatest third basemen in baseball history by far. He played a lot of games, played in a long career, but he was dominant for a long time. Played on a number of different teams uh, near the end of his career, primarily with Texas. Also had a good year in Boston. And he is by far a Hall of Famer. There's no doubt about it. In fact, I believe he was actually listed on 95% of the ballots. I saw people say on Twitter, too, people are sometimes just don't get it. Uh, people were saying, well, he should be unanimous. You know what? You know what I say to that? Babe Ruth wasn't unanimous. Not kidding. Go look at the results. Cy Young wasn't unanimous. Walter Johnson wasn't unanimous. There were people at that time who voted against them. So stop with the whole unanimous talk. Who cares if they're not unanimous? They got in. There was 5% of the voters who did not vote for Adrian Beltre. Does that mean they suck or they don't know what they're doing? No, it just means that was their opinion. We should really be going back and looking through past results and saying, how the hell do you not vote for Babe Ruth? How do you not vote for Mickey Mantle? How do you not vote for Mel Ott and Jimmy Fox and Cy Young and Walter Johnson? How do you leave those guys off your ballot? What about Mike Schmidt? I mean, all of these great players. Greg Maddox wasn't unanimous. (laughs) I mean, all of these guys. We're not unanimous. The guys I mentioned, the only one who was, the only one still, uh, was Mariano Rivera. And I be- maybe Derek Jeter. And Jeter never won an MVP. And yet he was unanimous. And people got to stop with the whole criticism thing. But anyway, um, 477 home runs, 1,700 RBIs for Adrian Beltre, 3,100 hits. I mean, that's pretty much a no-brainer. I think almost everybody had him on the ballot, and certainly for good reason. Todd Helton is the... Other guy who got in, Helton's been waiting for a little bit to get in, and we now live in a world where Larry Walker and Todd Helton, two non-Hall of Famers, are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Todd Helton, good career. I don't have any issue with his numbers, but he really didn't ever achieve any milestones. 1,400 RBIs, 370 home runs, 2,500 hits. He played his whole career in Colorado. It actually blows my mind, and even for the sabermetric people who like war, his war was only 62. This is an unimpressive Hall of Famer. And good for Todd Helton for getting in. I don't don't mean this disrespectfully. It comes off that way. But this is an unworthy Hall of Famer. This is somebody who is a Hall of Very Good player who, for some reason, voters galvanized around him because people cried about it, 
and now he got in. Helton's case has gone up and up. He was only he debuted at sixteen percent, probably where he should have been, and now he gets into the Hall of Fame in twenty twenty four. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Bad move by the Baseball Writers Association of America. We live in a world where Todd Helton gets in and Billy Wagner gets three votes short. I mean, it's all subjective. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But they got this one wrong again this year. So now we live in a world where Todd Helton and Larry Walker are Hall of Famers. I mean, you might as well let everybody in. Seriously. I mean, what are we waiting on then? There are a Hall of Very Good Players. Why is Paul Canerco not in? And that's actually a fair question. So you're going to sit here and put in the all-time Rocky, the guy who played for the Rockies his whole career, Todd Helton. Paul Canerco blows away Todd Helton in every statistical category. He is a beloved White Sox figure, and yet he fell off on the first ballot. Right? So, see, now we go back to other players, and we see discrepancies and inadequacies, and we're sitting here celebrating somebody else. And he did all this, Helton, in Colorado. Paul Canerco 430 home runs, and he's not even near the Hall of Fame. This guy hits 370, and we got to put him in. Why? Because he's an all-time Rocky? What a freaking joke. I mean, come on. Oh, my goodness. And then the other guy who got in, Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer is a good player. He was, uh, for a time, an elite player. But even Joe Maurer, you know, they put him in because he's a catcher, but he played first base for the last five years of his career and DH. So, you know, all of his numbers, they say, well, he's one of the best hitting catchers in history. Well, that's true if you count him as a catcher. <laughs> but he played first base in DH for the last five years of his career. And, in fact, he's only played above 150 games once in his entire career in a season. And that was the year he played first base. So, again, discrepancies, inconsistencies, inadequacies, and yet we all turn the other cheek and turn the blind eye and let them all get in. I got a I got an issue with that. I really do. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. Frankly, I think it's a joke. Maybe I'm the only one who gets heated up about this or gets pissed off about it, but you know, they're tarnishing the history of the game by letting people in who shouldn't be in. And I want to say this too. This has been happening for years. Like, Phil Rizzuto should not be in the Hall of Fame. Herb Pennick should not be in the Hall of Fame. There are guys in there today from the 30s and the 40s, 50s, 60s, on and on and on, who should not be there. So it's not just this electorate who's getting it wrong, but this electorate, for some reason, is feeling like more and more people should get in for no reason. Scott Rowland's in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I mean, did anybody... I mean, when you watched Scott Rowland play, did, did you think, yeah, this guy's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the all-time greats at third base. He is the worst third baseman in the Hall of Fame. And Todd Helton might be one of the worst first basemen in the Hall of Fame. Based on numbers... And based on what he did, where he did it, yeah, there's a huge asterisk next to his name. And then Joe Maurer, if Joe Maurer finished his career playing catcher and put up the numbers that he did, I could see a case why. I wouldn't even support it, but I could see a case why. He won an MVP. He won three batting titles as a catcher. That's pretty impressive. But he played catcher for only half his career. The last five years, as of course the position had a wear and tear on him, put him at first base. Next, they're going to put Buster Posey in the Hall of Fame, which they probably will. And meanwhile, guys like Billy Wagner, who actually deserve it, Billy Wagner's top 10, top five all time in saves and was dominant forever. His ERA plus is 60 points higher than Trevor Hoffman, and yet he's waiting until the 10th to try to get in. Somebody like him. In addition to, by the way, other guys who came close and didn't make it. I don't agree with all these players, but like, for example, Jimmy Rollins got 15% of the vote. Jimmy Rollins is an all-time great middle infielder. There's no doubt about it. MVP winner. World Series winner. Legendary baseball player. He's getting 15%, but we're letting Todd Helton in. Mark Burley got 8% of the vote. He gets to stay on the ballot. 5% is the minimum to stay on. Mark Burley was a very good pitcher. Do I think he should get in? I, I don't know, but you know what? He's getting only 8%. we got people at the top who are just as similar in production getting more. 
This is a weak ballot anyway, though. I mean, I'll look down the list. I'll name them off for you real quick. Gary Sheffield, by the way, fell off the ballot. He did not get in. Gary Sheffield finishes at 64%. He fell short. He will go to the Veterans Committee. My guess is he'll never get into the Hall of Fame. And you know what? I mean, he had 500 home runs. Now, I know there were the steroid stuff. That's the thing that bothers me about it. But at this point, I mean, you're letting Todd Helton and not Gary Sheffield? Who was a more generational? Who was a more respected player? How many kids imitate Gary Sheffield's batting stats? That should say enough about his impact on the game and his numbers. Chase Utley, oh boy, wait till he gets in. And it's coming, I'm telling you people, it's coming. This was only Utley's first year. 28%, all the sabermetricians are going to get into a room and put out a big press release and public relations spin, and he's going to be in the Hall of Fame in five years. Mark my words now, he shouldn't be there. Manny Ramirez and A-Rod were quite short. Carlos Beltran had a big boost, and Andrew Jones, another big boost, too. No disrespect to Andrew Jones, but he only had 1,900 hits. I mean, he didn't even have 2,000 hits. And Andrew Jones, after he left Atlanta, famously sputtered out. Signed that big deal in L.A., hit 158 in 81 games. And the Dodgers literally were so stunned at his regression, they just cut him loose. And now he gets to be on the Hall of Fame ballot and might end up getting in. I just don't understand how some of these voters vote. You know, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to have a Hall of Fame vote. I never will because I'm never going to be a, you know, a quote-unquote qualified writer. But if I did, I'd clean that place up. I'd clean that place up in a second. My ballots would be so different from the norm, people would get pissed off, and I wouldn't care. And there's, you know, there, there was one guy who submitted a blank ballot this year. You know what? I support it. I do. Why not? Who on this list is elite besides Adrian Beltre? Really, who on this list is like way up there, slam dunk? Yes, I know. Billy Wagner, in my opinion, but others don't even feel that way. I'm just saying. Some people just submitted only Adrian Beltre ballots. You know what? I don't blame them. And actually, I appreciate that approach more than I got to fill up my ballot with 10 people. I saw writers tweet out. They said, uh, you know, I only got 10 spots, but I could have picked 15 on this list. 15? Who's getting in? Who are you picking? <laughs> I mean, you might as well just check up all the boxes. Yeah, let's let Jose Reyes and James Shields and Matt Holliday and Bartolo Colon get in. I mean, come on, David Wright. I, my goodness. Ooh. These guys drive me crazy. Nevertheless, those are your three who get in. Adrian Beltre, Todd Helton, and Joe Maurer. They're in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And that will do it for us here on Sports Talk Chicago. I appreciate everybody tuning in. What a great, fun, and electric, high-energy show here today. Thank you to all of our great affiliates. Our new one, 98.3 The Life, WKN, 105.5 The Ticket, HGTV, Gen TV, WJOB, and Cities 92.9 Talk FM. Big thank you to John Meadows directing and producing to all of you. Follow us at Sports Talk Chicago. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button. And make sure you stay with us. Stay part of the conversation moving forward. Appreciate you. Until next time, so long from STC.